Hi everyone, my name is Doug Keeling and today I'm going to show you how to create a text effect that uh, kind of puts you in the Christmas mood where you've got some Christmas lights around your text. So let's get started. Um, I've created a new document. I like to work at 300 dpi in case I want to print it out. It's an 8 by 6 inch document and basically uh, just create your document, throw in some text that you like, uh, whatever font you want, and uh, you can see how big I've made it. You could make it as big or small depending on what look you're going for. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, obviously, to create a strand or a string of lights, we have to have a string. So we're going to grab the pen tool, and you can do it a couple ways, either a path or a shape. I'm going to do it using a shape, and I'll start out and, uh, and I'll show you why or, or how I go from there. So basically, you just grab the pen tool and start wrapping a string around all of your text. You can do it however you want. Okay, now I've drawn my path. I'm going to just press escape and that'll get me out of the actual pen tool. And I'm going to press the A key, that'll get me over to uh, the direct selection tool. And uh, now I can select this. Now, what I had done previously, and the reason that you didn't actually see a shape being created, is because I have the opacity of that layer turned down. And it kind of kept the memory of that from the previous one I was doing when I was getting set up for this tutorial. But that's what I like to do. See, if you turn it on, you see this crazy looking shape, um, you know, which is pretty unappealing. But in any case, what I like to do is leave that shape there because then I can go back and modify that path and I don't have to like go over to the path layer and save it and stuff like that. I've already got it in the shape layer. If I don't want it, I can just turn it off. And uh, right now I'll just call it, you know, string template or something and uh, leave it at that. And like I said, you could grab the pen tool, go in and modify the curves and stuff. For the sake of time, I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm going to click on it once and press uh, Command C or Control C and copy that. Then I've created a string folder. I'm going to just create a, a new uh, layer in there. I'm going to call this layer dark. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just for the sake of zooming. Now I'm going to paste that path I created. And you can see I don't have a vector mask here like this does. So you're not going to... Uh, basically you, you just have the path pasted. The point of that is to um, do the next step where we're going to grab like maybe a, a dark gray color, charcoal color, whatever you want to call it. Grab the direct selection tool and right click on this path we created and we're going to choose stroke path. Now before you do this you want to choose a small brush that's uh, pretty solid and you want to make sure that you don't click on simulate pressure. You want the path to be, the stroke of the path to be even the entire way around. So click OK. It'll stroke that for you. Whoa, you know, way too big. Um, so what we're going to do right now is undo that, go back to your brush settings, just grab the BT, B key, right click, and uh, I don't want 30 pixels, about 3 pixels is about all you need. Switch back over to your A key, um, to the, your direct selection tool and just do that again. Stroke path. So you have a nice little string going there. Now you can press escape and press it again and now you have a string going around your lights. And it's not actually going around it right now but that's what we're going to remedy next. Right before we do that I'm just going to press command J to duplicate that and we can just call it light or something like that and I'm going to press Command I, which will invert that. Okay, so now we've got uh, this kind of white layer on top of the the dark string. I'm going to move it up like a pixel. You don't even need to move it that much, and then drag your light behind your dark. And I don't know if you can see real well, but it kind of gives this thing a, a 3D kind of effect where you've got light on top and you've got dark on the bottom, and it kind of just makes the string look a little more realistic. Okay, so now. I'm going to go to the string layer and I'm going to apply a layer mask. I'm going to 
hold down command and click on this T icon for your text for your for your lights here. And then basically what you can choose to do is erase not erase, but cover up using this layer mask. Make sure you're, you choose black as your foreground color. And you're just going to paint over the things that you want to be hidden. So obviously, you want this to wrap around, um, you want this, the, the string to wrap around your, uh, your letters. So you're going to have to go about, you know, doing that somehow. So let's just erase it out of here. Go around, come out there, maybe go around the bottom here. Uh, go over the top, come out there, and I messed up a little bit there. I'll just undo that and be a little more careful this time. All right, we'll go over the top. Let's say we'll go behind the T, and we'll go behind it again here. We can go in front and erase out of there. So you can see now if I deselect that by pressing Command or Control D, now if you look at it, you can see that we've got, you know, it actually snaking around all these lights and you could make it look a lot more fancy I personally like it to be kinda like they're just kinda slipshod you know thrown the they're just kinda strung out there so alright so we've got that we've got that done um, the next thing we're gonna do is actually start putting lights on this string so we're going to basically create a shape and I've already done this and, I, and I'll show you uh, what I what I did hide my string template so you can see I've created three bulbs and I just created one shape that I duplicated three times into separate layers so I've got blue uh, I haven't renamed them all yet but we've got red lights blue and green and what I've created are three separate layer styles one for green Christmas lights, blue, and red. And uh, you should be able to download these from my website if you want them, or you could create something similar. But it's basically just like a an inner glow and an outer glow, and I think I put like a, a satin uh, on there too. I neglected to mention what the actual color codes were for these colors. If if you want to follow those, you could obviously make your own or do any color you want. But uh, here's the hex codes for the green, red, and blue that I used. For lights that are on the string in these areas, they are going to obviously be in front of the text. For lights that are maybe in this area, they're still there, but they're going to be behind. So you might have some that are going to be peeking out around and stuff. So that's why I've basically duplicated this. So I have a series of lights in front and also a series of lights behind. Um, don't, don't worry about these lights being over here. I just left those in there so that there'd be something in the vector mask and it wouldn't, uh, you know, try to delete the, the layers and stuff. So we'll be moving those and we can actually do that as we start now. So basically, pretty easy. Just drag your first Christmas light over there, rotate it around with that shape you've created. Let's stick it right there. I'm just going to go green, blue, red. So grab your blue, move it into position, and I'm just going to space these out as I, as I see fit. I find that the smaller the lights are that you create, the more you can, the more of them you can put uh, into, you know, obviously on, onto the text, and it won't, it won't make the text look terribly muddy. Um, I want to space things out, you know, because if you put too many on, then it, you can't hardly even read the text anymore because it's so drowned drowned out with lights. So I'm going to grab this red one, bring it over, and I like to alternate going left and right of the string. Maybe I'll move that one up, move the blue one up just a hair back up to there. All right. So that's a good start. Um, our next one is going to be a green one again, and this one is going to start going behind that L. So I'm just going to go down to my behind lights, grab the green, and drag it over here. Rotate it how you want. And you, you could do it a couple ways. I'm going to try it this way. I'm going to put it behind first and see if I like that. Um, I think I could actually put that one in front. So what I'm going to do is just copy that by uh, using the direct selection tool, tool, click into this shape, Command C, and then I'm going to go up to the above in front layer and paste that into there. Okay, so as you can see now, I've got two bulbs in this green layer here and here, and that's what you want to do. You want to keep all of your lights basically on these two layers above and below, and that way, you know, every time you 
just copy a new light, your layer style is applied to it, and you won't rack up tons of layers in the process. It's a, you know, kind of, uh, and, and you also don't have to rasterize these. And it, so, in any case, this is the way I've done it. I'm sure there's a, a million different ways you could do it, but this is what uh, what I like and what's worked for me. So, all right, so I've got that, and uh, I don't need this green one in green one in behind here yet. So I'm just going to drag it back over here for the time being. Okay, so the next thing we need is a blue one, and this one's going to come behind definitely. So you can't even see it, but I'm going to turn it. And you could turn off the, the uh, text layer to see this. But I'm just assuming that my line is going there. So now you can see I've got my, my blue one in there. I need to rename this layer to red, which I did. Going to grab this one, bring it over. And this is going to start to get monotonous real soon. So basically what I'm going to do is just, uh, I'm going to speed this up. And you can see what I'm doing. And, uh, and we'll just go from there. Now I know I already covered this, but you're going to see me switching over and over again from between the red, blue, green layers. And just to make it clear, and obviously you can see by the layers palette, I'm not copying any layers or anything. I'm just duplicating the shapes that are in each layer over and over again and repositioning them. And uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, the, when you see the little bounding box and, and right there, the little box that was uh, that I was using to move things, that's using the free transform tool, which um, I just get to real quick by pressing command or control T. So that's a little explanation of that, and uh, I'll let it go. All right, and that's the the finished effect, uh, at least if you want to take it that far. Uh, you can also take it to the next level, and I'll show you that next. So, I mean, it's winter time. We've got Christmas lights. Where on earth is our snow? First thing we want to do is create a new layer on top of this uh, in front here. We'll just name it snow. And we're going to grab a, uh, a small brush. I'm going to go with a solid, like a harder brush but you can take the uh, the size down pretty good and I'm also going to turn on the uh, the tablet pressure and then basically what I'm going to do is just uh, choose a white and I sped it up here obviously uh, but I'm just painting on with solid white you know basically a, a snow kind of a fluffy patch on top of each area that I think would maybe accumulate some snow so it's pretty straightforward and nothing really exciting but um, I think it achieves a pretty nice effect in the end, so I'm actually even going to speed this up a little more and uh, just get right to the final effect because there's not really a whole lot to explain at this level.
And there you have the finished look that I was going for. I think it uh, comes off pretty successful with the snow and the lights there, so you can let me know what you think. Feel free to, to share it or uh, leave your comments here on YouTube or wherever you see it. And I uh, hope everybody has a great Christmas.